Good morning, everyone. A, uh, a quick impromptu Facebook Live. Uh, Dr. Gina Calora, Dr. Bill Anton with CEO Effectiveness. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're having our morning coffee this morning, having some great discussion. Um, clearly, we're in a beautiful environment, beautiful lake behind us, blue skies. And, and it got us thinking what the significance is, and there's so much discussion and conversation about environment and, and, and the role that environment plays with being productive and being effective. So Dr. Anton and I were discussing it and he had such incredible insight that we wanted to make sure that we were able to share it with you. So so Dr. Anton, good morning, of course. Good morning, yeah. Um, so, so Dr. Anton, the, the, the focus that so many folks have on environment, right, and, and making sure that um, they have an environment that, that will push forward productivity and effectiveness, is that something that truly is important? Uh, it is important, but it can only get you so far. Hmm. Uh, like, for example, um, the internal environment has much more potential to take you farther than you ever dreamed possible. And yet, at the same time, most of us try to tweak the external environment. And by external, I mean the outside world from ourselves, but also the world that we're conscious of uh, and that we think represents reality. Hmm. So, so, and I love this, we were talking about this a bit earlier. So the internal environment, what are some of the factors that folks need to consider when we're thinking about leadership, when we're thinking about organizational effectiveness? The internal environment, are we talking about more, you know, what's happening emotionally, psychologically, both? Well, it, it really, the internal environment and, and the kind of access you have to it, uh, it really affects cognitive habits, emotional habits, and behavioral habits. And, and what really happens is we sort of get programmed early in life. And, and based on that programming, we develop circuits. And depending on how much access those neural circuits give us to our true selves, we then define ourselves by our functional ability. That is what we're able to do. And, and so most of us walk around believing that we are have we know everything about us that's important and that we even know what skills we need to acquire and and what kind of consultants we need to uh, uh, hire and all of these things yet the reality is that a lot of our brain is devoted to unconscious processes there are unconscious processes uh, like the reptile brain that will never be conscious you know regulating blood pressure blood sugar levels so the things that keep us alive and will never be conscious are unconscious. But then there's a level of where the unconscious is like a flight data recorder. It records from day one, but it only records input based on the software that we developed early in our life. And so our brain is organized around the world that we knew, not the world that we face. And so what businesses and consultants and coaches uh, uh, do is they take you as you are or as as you believe you are and they add knowledge skills and abilities they try to influence culture but they're not really uh, touching on the most important part of change which is the revolution within yourself if you sort of think about think about the unconscious and the conscious mind as a horse and a rider hmm. the horse is the unconscious right and the rider is the conscious but if the writer is only aware of a fraction of who they are, then their relationship with the horse is never going to be what it should be. And all of us have, have gone riding, or many of us have gone riding, and, and there are certain uh, people that can get the horse to do exactly what they want, and there are other people that the horse decides. And if you really have no knowledge or no link to the horse, then the horse might try to knock you off and, <laughs> and go underneath a, a, right. a, a low-lying limb. And so the conscious and unconscious relationship is just like that. One of the things that we focus on and believe is really important is to expand the amount of yourself that is conscious so that you become the rider that controls the unconscious horse. And that's not easy to do. It requires a lot of training. It requires a lot of skill. And it really requires a tremendous amount of experience. So along those lines what's kind of the first step folks who perhaps can tune in this morning what's kind of the first step to putting that foot forward to be able to, to achieve that 
Uh, I would say the first step is to take the things that you're most certain of in life, the things that you never question. Um, you know, like, like for many years, uh, 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 women uh, were taught that women aren't good at math and engineering, mm -hmm. okay? Yet we know that the top Na NASA mathematician ever was a black woman. Absolutely. Okay, so she didn't get the message that, that other women got at that time. So analogously, whether you're a man or a woman or a boy or a girl, you're encoding certain messages about yourself how lovable you are, how capable you are, how good you are at this, how, you know, just tons of information. Those messages are represented in the brain as circuits. And when you violate those circuits, you begin to feel uncomfortable. You begin to feel anxious. So if you begin to doubt the things about yourself that you're most certain of, and as a consequent, develop your capacity to tolerate greater amounts of anxiety, then you're gonna be able to stretch the access that your brain has to its frontal lobes, which is really the executive center of your brain. And once you develop a connection with that part of your brain, there's no turning back. But very few people actually do that, even highly successful people. They live ritualized lives. They never uh, take a second look. They never doubt the things they're most certain of. And as a, as a consequence, they live in a maimed horizon, a horizon which is stripped of the lure of infinite distances which they're capable of wow so you know when we're thinking about it and so what you and i were talking about earlier that this idea of your external environment has a massive influence on you is not necessarily accurate there's much more going on internally that we need to recognize and more importantly question right yeah it's sort of like <clears throat> let's say you were born uh ferrari with 12 cylinders and as a consequence of your early learning uh, you know, you didn't service the car and it's only operating on six cylinders. Well, you then begin to believe that you're a six cylinder car rather than a 12 cylinder Ferrari. And all of your habits, all your relationships, all of the things that uh, you believe about yourself become like a governor on what that equipment is able to accomplish. And if you never challenge it, never question it, or never really interact with a person that knows how to get you to that part of yourself, then you live in a world that is much different than the world you're capable of living in. Wow, so, so to, and as you guys can see, this has been our discussion and conversation this morning. So we've been going into some really deep pockets and angles of understanding really what makes people tick. But more importantly, when we're thinking about the external, not spending as much time thinking about what's going on out there, but questioning what's going on in here to really push ourselves to a higher level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Right, so um, wanted to share that with you this morning. It's it's one of the things we're obviously with this beautiful background and talking about environment. Though this is picturesque and it's beautiful, uh, when we're thinking about what it takes to push yourself um, to the next level of understanding, to the next level of productivity and efficiency, question more what's happening here and here as opposed to what's happening around you. Yeah, that that's where the power is. That's where the refinement of the relationship between the horse and the rider is. That's where the self, uh, 12 cylinders, you gain access to the 12 cylinders of your equipment. And that's where everything changes and you discover your inner genius and your real power. Morning Knowledge with the man himself, Dr. Bill Anton. CEO Effectiveness, look us up, www.ceoeffectiveness.com. Make it a fantastic Monday, a fantastic week. As always, Dr. Anton, love our discussions, love our conversations. Take care, everyone.